Mimi Irons. He is David Farrell. This is the edit, so let's see what's making the cut this week. Barrowman's back and he's feeling fabulous, but he's not too chuffed to be asked about that accent. That's it. <laughs> Scottish singer-songwriter Nina Nesbitt talks to us about her big break on a primetime TV show in America. And the Strictly Professionals reveal all about their new tour and even give David a wee lesson. I don't think we've ever had such nope. a busy show, so let's get straight to the man for whom the show must always go on. John Barrowman is bringing his new show to the UK in June. It's got a bit of everything and he's kicking it off where else in Glasgow and he told our David why. There's a reason, obviously, that it kicks off in Glasgow because I can open up and kind of just go for it. Barrowman has found a whole new audience since appearing on I'm a Celebrity last year and that's where the name for the tour came from. I had no clue that a catchphrase was being developed when I was in there. I just said one day, fabulous! And I came out and everyone was saying, fabulous! And I went, what? But now there's what a tour. Happened? <laughs> now there's a tour. Great! This series saw a bromance between John and Harry Redknapp, and John says he's really honoured to have had an impact on the football manager's attitudes. You know, it's only been the last few days that I've been reading that Harry said I was the first openly gay man he's ever come across. So for me to read that Harry, you know, has he's saying, you know, he loves me and all that kind of stuff, that's, that's great. We're all the same. We just happen to love different kinds of people and that's it. And for Harry to say that and recognise that, I am so happy and so proud of that. So David, how did I'm a Celeb change things for John then? Well, naturally, it just became a bit more fabulous. Fabulous! I love it. I love it. We can never have enough of that. Uh, no, it's, uh, you just hear it. You just hear it in your head. And, and you know it's John you know, Barrowman. Yeah. But um, in all seriousness, how, how did it change things for him? Well, he said it just made, it, it made him a, a little bit calmer. Really? Uh, yeah. He said he just thinks about things a little bit more. Um, but it's opened him, opened up him to a whole load of new audiences as well. So. And that accent, sometimes we hear him speaking an, an American accent, yep. sometimes Scottish. You decided to get the, the Scottish yep. one. How did, you, how did that come about? Well, I asked him about that and he had something to say here's why i get asked all the time and yeah. i'm going to tell you because you're scottish and everybody watching this is scottish and i'm going to say it bluntly it really annoys me when people say you know even down south or you know you've got that accent and you put it on and da, da, da. that's who i am i don't i'm get. i don't have to explain myself anymore the fact of the matter is i'm scottish and i'm a naturalized american citizen i am both my homeland Scotland and I live in America and I'm proud of it. I speak this way with other Scots because anybody who doesn't speak Scottish is not privileged to hear it. And that's it. There we go, David. That's He's getting it. you told you were privileged no. to hear it. Uh -huh. Did he get a bit of your American accent? How's that? Oh, yeah. He got the American accent. <laughs> now what? I know why that wasn't in the VT. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, that's not too bad. Come on. Could no, you do no, better? no, David, Come I don't on. do accents. I don't do accents. Yes, yes. No, I do not do accents. <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> right, enough of this nonsense. It's hard enough me speaking in my I usual voice. <laughs> Let's see what else has been happening this week, shall we? The directors of the latest Avengers film have pleaded with fans not to reveal plot details after some footage was reportedly leaked online earlier this week. Please don't spoil it for others the same way you wouldn't want it spoiled for you, wrote Anthony and Joe Russo in an open letter. Madonna has released her new single, Medellin. It's her first new record in four years. This week has also seen her reveal a new identity, Madame X, who, according to her YouTube channel, is a secret agent travelling around the world changing identities. And a UK audience of around 2.3 million people watched the premiere of the final series of Game of Thrones on Monday. Sky Atlantic's repeat of the episode on Monday night attracted a further 698,000 viewers. That audience is a 12% rise from the season 7 finale. Now, how about this for achievements at just the age of 24? She has two top 40 albums. Her songs have been on famous adverts, while her face has been all over billboards. Nina Nesbitt is a girl certainly on the rise. The singer-songwriter from Livingston has been very busy on her UK tour, but made time for a catch-up with our lovely David. Is it really me you're missing? I kind of just wanted to write an album that was like an honest account of someone in their early 20s 
living in a big city and experiencing all these things. Because I feel like your early 20s, especially now, is a really weird period of time where you're trying to work out who you are and who you want to be with and what you want to do. So there's, yeah, there's like songs about obviously relationships. I write a lot of breakup songs. You performed on The Late Show. Uh, so embarrassingly, I had never heard of it. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. It's just like a little TV thing. Don't think about it too much. And then like the night before, I went to follow him on Twitter and found out he had like 18 million followers. And everyone I was talking to was like, that's a really big deal. I'm quite like a shy performer normally, like I'm very chilled. But on this, I was like, do you know what? I might only get one chance to be on an American TV show, so I'm gonna go all out. I was like doing the back bend and loving life. Glasgow date hmm. on the tour, and a certain friend of yours popped up on stage. He did, <laughs> yeah. Lewis, Lewis Capaldi is one of the best singers I've heard in my life, genuinely. So David, who is, <laughs> come on, you've got work to do. Who's not talking about Lewis Capaldi? <laughs> There's Nina Nice, but someone else just absolutely loving him. I know, he just he just popped up at the show as well. They're good friends, but can you believe that Nina Nesbitt once knocked back Lewis Capaldi, the guy who <laughs> spent seven weeks at number one, and here's why. <laughs> I used to have these competitions for fans to support me on tour, because that's kind of how I got started. So I was like, you know, I'm going to let other people have that opportunity. And he said he actually sent in an entry, like, years ago. I think it was a cover of Stay Out or something. And apparently I rejected him. And how do you feel now, <laughs> having rejected Mortified, him? obviously. Mortified. Oh, I bet she would be. heard my genuine shock there. I know. And take a breath. <gasps> so, uh, like Lewis Capaldi, she's been gigging for, for years, though. Yep. We're hearing a lot about her now, though. What's she got planned next? She's had that, that tour, yep. the tour that finished tonight. Yep, and she's had a US tour as well at the Late Show. Things are really on the rise for her. Festival season uh, around the corner as well. She's off out to Australia, Singapore, doing some gigs there. Then she's back in the UK for festival Well, if season. you can't catch her in Australia... You'll get <laughs> yeah, over this summer. Yes. A bit closer. And uh, yeah, talking of festivals and organisers of the Electric Fields Festival are saying sorry after they moved the event from a castle in Dumfries and Galloway to a venue in Glasgow. Ticket holders were offered a partial refund following the change of plans, but after an outcry on social media, they've now offered people all of their money back if they want it. The organisers say we massively underestimated how the change in venue would affect so many of you. It's been one of the most difficult decisions we've ever had to make, and it's not been made lightly. Our main focus was to ensure we delivered electric fields in spite of new challenges faced rather than no festival at all. So David do we know exactly why the organisers decided to move the festival from, from this castle to the, yep. the venue in Glasgow now? Um, well it all comes down to money. What the organisers have said is that it's due to the rising costs of producing outdoor camping festivals and ongoing logistical issues so they've made a decision as a result of that to move it to an inner city and make it an inner city festival in Glasgow. People understandably not happy about this. They've got their tents ready. They're going to be pitching up beside a castle coming yep. to somewhere in Glasgow. It's not really going to be the same experience, is it? Well, it's, uh, it's completely different from an outdoor festival in the grounds of a castle, like you say, to an indoor venue. Although there is an outdoor area, a yard at SWG3, which is a capacity of 5,000. Uh, last year, the headliner, uh, which was uh, No Gallagher's High Flying Birds, had 8,000 people watch that headline show. So there's a difference there. Of course there is. And Ian's got in touch on Twitter at BBC The Edit. He is agreeing and he's said that he's getting a full refund because he doesn't think it's child friendly this new venue so it, it's not going to work for everyone no, is it no and you, when you move it to an inner city festival you know there'll be costs of hotels travel costs maybe less for people that would travel from glasgow or around that city so there's a whole load of different uh, elements to this as well but if you look at what it means to the local area uh, the local economy in the and galloway uh, last year's it roughly generated one and a half million so that's a lot of money that that area missing out on. Well, we'll have to stay tuned on that one to see how it does develop over the summer, of course. Now, before we go, it's been quite a week for Strictly as the curse struck again. This year's winner, Stacey Dooley, splitting up with her long-term partner. But the pros, well, they're the pros, aren't they? So they're heading out back on the road on the professionals tour. Our David caught up with them to find out what audiences can expect. 
and it comes to the pro tour, we can really go a bit crazy because we can really push ourselves and I yeah. think that is great. So you'll see like why I got into dance, how I got into dance and then you'll be able to see Karen, how she got into dance and I think that's going to be really interesting yeah. for people to see that. It'll be great because there'll be routines where we're really pushing the boundaries with the choreography and, and costumes and music and, and like he said, it's, it's about getting to know us. It's such a family show, you know, and everybody loves dancing now and it, you know, you get, everybody gets involved. And, and it's fun, and it's happy, and who wouldn't love that? It's infectious, you want, you want more, always. <laughs> who would you like to dance with next, next series? Have you got someone in, in your oh. main cabin? Oh, the good. queen, oh, my queen <laughs> is not the beautiful. Mary Berry, I'll just hug her. Oh. Imagine me dancing with Mary Berry. She did come to watch it a couple of times, didn't she? I know, so Mary it's Berry. just not like cake. There we go, that'd be a same-sex couple as well. <laughs> that would be you and Mary Berry. Is that something you would like to see come into the show? I think the thing is with the show, when it comes to same sex, we'll wait and see. We never know. I think it will happen one day. I don't know when that is, but we'll be, uh, we'll be prepared and ready for it, that's yeah. for sure. Because at the end of the day, it's not about the, the sex, the gender. It's about what we're creating together. So I was going to say, David, this tour, there's no celebrities in it, but that's the thing, isn't it? The professionals, they oh, actually yeah. are celebrities in their own right now. Yeah, I think if you, you, you know, you asked anyone that went to see Strictly Come Dancing live, a lot of people would say they're there to see the pros because they are stars of the show. Um, but on this tour, we've got uh, Pasha Kovalev, Gia Giovanni Pernici, Katia Jones, Oti Mabusi, Karen Clifton, AJ Pritchard, all the big names. All the big names that people will yep. love, of course, from the TV show. And were you uh, were you dancing then when you were chatting to them? Did you get a wee <laughs> practice, did you? Are you asking? Oh, of course I'm asking. <laughs> well, I was dancing. <laughs> And change and walk. Oh, and walk. Oh, right, okay. Change, kick, down, change, and walk, and walk. Repeat. Right. Change, change, and walk, and walk, and change, and walk, and walk. Karen just punched him in the face. Karen just punched me. You told me not to hit you. Oh, I'm just being injured. I'm sorry, but that's good flicking. Is that good? Yeah, it's good. Right, what, what marks would you give me? Four. Four. Eight, 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 okay. eight, eight, eight out of ten, eight, not eight, eight, eight out of twenty. Eight out of ten, David. That's pretty high. I that's think. Game, I don't know if the dancing's for you. What about what about maybe a judging role? No, because they're looking for a replacement for Darcy no, Russell. I know not? I'd be perfect <laughs> with another guy with two left feet. Um, no, Oti Mabusi was a favourite. She has said no in an interview this week. Anton de Beck is still a favourite, and Nicole Scherzinger's name has uh, snuck into the race as well. Ah, well, she's got some free Saturday nights now, I suppose, That's isn't true, she? So yes. we'll uh, stay posted on that one. Well, here's some ways you could be entertaining yourself in the weeks and months to come. American actress and activist Rose McGowan is back at the Edinburgh Fringe this year. McGowan, one of the leading figures of the Me Too movement, brings her one-woman show, Planet Nine, to the Capitol's Assembly Hall. Two Doors Down star Arabella Weir is also in Edinburgh this August. The actress who plays Beth Beard in the hit series will be premiering her first ever stand-up show. Tickets for Does My Mum Loom Big In This are on sale from tomorrow. And sequins, lace fronts and tucking. If you don't know what I'm on about, then it's because you haven't had the chance to watch Mother Tucker's Drag Queens of Glasgow yet. The documentary is available on BBC iPlayer. It takes a glimpse behind the makeup, wigs and corsets to find out what it takes to live life in drag, why people do it and the daily battles drag queens still face following three Scottish queens at different stages in their drag careers. Well, as always, so much to say and do, so little time. That's been the edit for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Good night. Thank you.